Welcome to Stillwater's Wreath Designs, crafty friends. If you enjoy all things wreath making, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Hey friends, it's Nikki here with Stillwater's Wreath Designs, and we are going to make an easy patriotic wreath since we're approaching the summer season and all of those lovely patriotic summer holidays. How is everyone today? Let me show you some of the things that we'll be using today. This is a 14 inch wire wreath ring from the Dollar Tree. I've got three different types of 10 inch deco mesh. I've grabbed a couple of two and a half inch and one one and a half inch rolls of wired patriotic ribbon. You're gonna need a handful of white Chanel stems or pipe cleaners. I've also got this patriotic truck sign from the Dollar Tree that we may or may not use. And of course, you're going to need a good pair of scissors, your hot glue gun and some glue sticks, your wire snips, and if you'd like, your self-healing mat and a rotary cutter. Friends, I'll leave a list of all the items you'll need to make this wreath in the description below, as well as all the tools that I use to make this an easy project. Go ahead and get your glue gun plugged in. It'll need a few minutes to heat up before we start here. Before we can make our wreath, I'm going to show you how to prepare your wire wreath frame from the Dollar Tree so that it's ready to load with deco mesh. So basically, if you've ever used a work wreath form, um, maybe that you would have ordered from an online wreath making website, those can run anywhere between five and ten dollars, um, just depending on where you grab it. So I, I'd like to teach you really quickly how to make your own work wreath form that's much more cost effective. These frames from the Dollar Tree are $1.25 regardless of the size that you grab. This 14 inch is the most standard size. And then you're also just going to need a handful of Chanel stems, which just call, cost you a few cents each. So it's definitely a much more cost effective option. All right, friends, first things first, these are just standard 12 inch pipe cleaners. You can grab these really from anywhere. Um, and we're going to be using 18 of these. So when you take a look at your wire wreath frame, you're going to see that there are six sections. And a section is the area from one crossbar to the next. That constitutes one section. And there are four rings, one, two, three, four, um, so that you've got six sections with four rings each. And we're going to add three pipe cleaners per section. We'll start with the inner section. So if we take a look at these rings, friends, and we would say this is ring one, ring two, ring three, and ring four. You're going to first focus on the inner two rings, uh, rings one and two. And all you're going to do, friends, is add one pipe cleaner around rings one and two in the center of each section. So you're just gonna wrap that around rings one and two, give it a couple of tight twists, and then point those guys towards the inside of your wire frame. Once you've got your six pipe cleaners added to the inner area of your wire wreath frame, it's time to then add the pipe cleaners to the outer ring. And we're gonna do the exact same thing, friends. However, we're going to be adding two per section all the way around your wire wreath frame. And you're just going to take your pipe cleaner, wrap it around rings three and four, give them a couple of tight twists, and this time point them outwards. And so you're just gonna center those as best as you can, leaving an inch and a half or so to two inches between the crossbar and Chanel stem number one, and then a couple of inches between your your two pipe cleaners and then also that last crossbar. And you're just gonna follow the same recipe all the way around. All 
All right, friends, so we've added in 18 pipe cleaners into the 14 inch wire wreath frame. You should have three per section, one on the upper two rings and two on the outer two rings. If that upper pipe cleaner got squirrely and moved around while you were adding in the lowers, just go ahead and give them a scooch back to where they belong. And now what we're gonna do, friends, is go ahead and grab your glue gun and all the way around your wreath frame where your pipe cleaner meets the wreath frame. You're just gonna give it a little bead of glue so it runs right over the top of your Chanel stem or your pipe cleaner and onto your wreath frame. This will just help you give that good adherence. So this is probably just a half of an inch bead of glue running across the pipe cleaners here. So just work your way around, add that little bit of glue and that'll help it secure. I'll meet you back here. Once you get all of your beads of glue ran along those pipe cleaners, friends, go ahead and set your work wreath frame off to the side to let that glue have a little bit of time to dry. And we'll start prepping our deco mesh. All right, friends, we're gonna use three different types of 10 inch deco mesh. We're gonna use um, this white, red, and blue metallic striped deco mesh for the cruffles that we'll be adding all along our wreath frame. We're also gonna add a one inch curl to every single cruffle, and we're gonna bounce back and forth between the red and the blue. So grab your self-healing mat and your rotary cutters or a tape measure and scissors if you don't have the rotary cutter and self-healing mat and we're going to cut 18 inch pieces of this striped mesh for the cruffle so that's an easy way to remember friends you've got 18 pipe cleaners on your wreath frame um, so you need 18 pieces at 18 inches in length all right, friends, so we're just gonna roll this out and cut it at 18 inches in length and 18 pieces. So go ahead and cut your 18 pieces and I'll meet you back here. Now that you've got your 18 pieces of 18 inch deco mesh cut and ready to load, go ahead and grab a chip clip or binder clip. Um, even a clothespin is just fine as you see here and your work wreath frame. By now that glue should be nice and dry and ready for you to begin loading. And we're going to add one cruffle of our red, white, and blue deco mesh to every single pipe cleaner, friends. And to make a cruffle, your deco mesh likes to curl in on itself and we're gonna follow that natural flow, folks. And the reason why I really prefer cruffles is because deco mesh loves to fray and a cruffle really helps to prevent that fray. And so what you're going to do is take the end of your first piece of deco mesh and roll it in on itself two or three times. Basically, what you're doing is tucking in those ends so that they get very little exposure and won't fray. And then flip it over. And then at the other end, give it a couple of rolls and then take your fingers and scrunch and gather until you reach the end of your deco mesh. Then you can remove your clip and pinch it in the middle. And what you've got here is what we call a cruffle. And so what cruffle really means, friends, is that there's a curl on each end and a ruffle in the middle, hence the cruffle. And you can bring your cruffle into any pipe cleaner. It doesn't matter if you start on the top or bottom. Keeping that pinched between your fingers, add that cruffle into your first set of pipe cleaners. Just open them up into a wide V Place that cruffle all the way down at the center of that V and give it a couple of tight twists. And you've just added your first cruffle. Let's make one more together, friends, and then we'll speed through this process. So again, grab your deco mesh, 
fold in one end two or three times to really tuck away those, those ends and prevent the fray. Flip it around, fold it in a couple of times on the other end. Take your fingers and scrunch and gather, scrunch and gather all the way through until you reach the other side. Pinch that with your fingers. We'll move on to your next set of pipe cleaners. Open them up into a white V. Place that cruffle all the way down in the center at the base and give it a couple of tight twists. We're going to repeat the same step, friends, all the way around until you've got one cruffle added to both the inner and the outer rings. All of your pipe cleaners should have one cruffle, and then I'll meet you back here. Okay, friends, we've just added our 18 pieces of 18-inch deco mesh into our wreath frame. We've got one cruffle added into each set of pipe cleaners or Chanel stems. So your wreath should look something like this. And let me just add here, friends, I mean, obviously, of course, we're making a patriotic wreath today. However, this is really more of a recipe. So you can certainly use any kind of deco mesh you would like, any kind of ribbon combination, any kind of embellishments and signs that you would like. Um, this is more so for a recipe. Of course, you're welcome to make a patriotic wreath um, just like what I'm making here, but feel free to tweak it and make it as you wish. All right, friends, so the next step is our next layer of deco mesh. This is looking really good, but it's still pretty light and airy. Uh, and so we wanna give that a little bit more depth and dimension with some more deco mesh. So go ahead and set your wreath off to the side. And we're gonna grab the other two colors of deco mesh that we have here. Um, so we're gonna use this pretty red and this metallic -y blue to make curls to add into our wreath. And we're going to add one curl per set of pipe cleaners or Chanel stems. And since we, we've got 18 ties on our wreath frame, we'll do nine of each. And we're gonna do these in 10 inch cuts. So grab your scissors and ruler or your self healing mat um, and rotary cutter. And we're gonna cut nine pieces of each color at 10 inches in length. So go ahead and get your curls cut and I'll meet you back here. Now that you've got 18 10 inch curl pieces of deco mesh cut, nine of each color, we're gonna go ahead and add those into our wreath. So go ahead and pull your wreath back up to your work area. And let me show you how we make a curl, friends. It's super easy and it really helps to give your deco mesh wreath lots of extra depth and dimension. So go ahead and grab one of your 10 inch pieces here. And as you can see, again, it likes to curl in on itself. And so curl side up. You're just gonna start at one end and curl the entire wreath or roll, excuse me, curl the entire piece of deco mesh all the way to the end until you've got this little tube here. And it's probably, oh, an inch in diameter here at my fingertips probably two inches on the ends because it bulks out a little bit. And all you're gonna do is pinch that curl right in the middle with your fingers. And then coming into your wreath, you're gonna go to any set of Chanel stems and seam side down of your curl, press that all the way down to the center of that Chanel stem or pipe cleaner and give it a couple of tight twists and you've just added your first curl, friends. And because we're using two colors, I'm gonna go back and forth between the two colors. So I'll grab my blue. I'm letting it lay on the mat here at curl side up. And at one end, I'm just gonna start rolling this up into a cylindrical tube. I'm gonna pinch that in the middle and I'll come to my next set of pipe cleaners. Seam side down on that curl right in the middle. I'll press that all the way down to the base of this V of the Chanel stem here, pipe cleaner. 
and give it a couple of tight twists. You're going to do this all the way around your entire wreath friends on both the lower and the upper levels so that each Chanel stem or pipe cleaner gets one curl. I prefer to alternate back and forth with my colors. You can certainly load your curls in wherever you'd like. It's your wreath. So let's go ahead and get our curls loaded and I'll meet you back here. All right, friends, we've got all of our curls added into our wreath. Just look at how much more depth and dimension this beauty has with all of those extra curls. Really looking super patriotic and I'm already really loving this. So the next step for us, friends, uh, we need to make a bow. So go ahead and set your wreath off to the side and grab your wired ribbon of choice. I'm pretty sure I mentioned this earlier, but I always choose um, a couple of different widths. Usually my go-to ribbon width is a two and a half inch ribbon or two and a one and a half inch ribbon. I feel like the different width just really gives it depth and dimension. You can choose to use the same ribbon. You can use multiple different types, such as I am doing here. doesn't matter how many you use, friends, or how little. Just make sure that whatever ribbon you are using is wired. I'm just going to make a quick and simple hand bow, friends. I'll probably move through this bow making fairly quickly. Um, if you are new to bow making or you're still struggling with bow making, I will leave a couple of tutorials for you below in the description of this video, which will give you a couple of uh, tutorials that are slow moving and more step-by-step -step pace to help you with your bow making. And so everything I tell you at this point, friends, this is just my own preferred way. You can certainly tweak this method or recipe as you wish, but I always start with my two and a half inch ribbon and I put that on the bottom. And again, this is going to be a simple hand bow. And what I like to tell folks, friends, is that when you're making your bows and you've got your tail, which is the piece that hangs down, you've got tails and loops, you always want to make your tails a little bit longer because you can always trim them off if you need to, but you sure can't add any ribbon on. So make them a little bit longer. And there's always a pretty side and a not so pretty side to ribbon, folks. That's not a good example. So you've got a pretty side and a not so pretty side. And you always want that pretty side to be showing. So I'm just going to use one hand as my stationary hand to hold my ribbon material. So I'm pinching. I've probably got a 10 inch tail there. I'm going to twist. I can make a loop, probably a six inch loop or so. Doesn't need to be terribly big for this particular wreath. I add that into my fingers and I'm pinching and twisting right underneath my thumb there, making another loop. I'm gonna hold that underneath my hand here. Then I want to make sure those loops are about the same size. And as you can see, they're super different. So I need to give myself some more length here. An easy way to see if your loops are the same size is just pull them up together with your fingers. And if one is longer than the other, you can just, just adjust accordingly. I've got my next tail cut here. I'll cut that off. Set that to the side. On to my next ribbon type. Isn't this pretty, friends? That's actually like, I'm not sure if the camera's catching, capturing it, but that's a really pretty glittered star. So cute. I always make my tails a little bit shorter as I go. But the loops will be nearly the same size, maybe just a tad smaller. So that biggest loop is probably six, six inches, friends, in case you're curious. And those tails at their longest will be 10. Oops. Oh, 
on to the next ribbon type. And we twist that, friends, so that pretty side's always out. Looping again, making sure those loops are the same size, and they are. Cutting off my tail. Those tails are getting a little shorter every time. And I'm on to the last ribbon type here. This too is also kind of a, a mix here. The, the red and the blue stars are glitter, and then the white um, are more of a matte. So a really cute finish. So I'm adding my tail, giving it a twist under my thumb so that that pretty side's out. Making my loop, giving it another twist underneath my thumb, making my last loop. And cutting off that last tail. We'll set that off to the side. And now our next step, friends, is to secure your um, ribbon stack or your bow. You can use floral wire. You can use a Chanel stem or pipe cleaner. Or you can use a small zip tie. This is actually a six inch zip tie. I like them because I feel like they really give a lot of strength and stability to the bow but you can use what you like. Just cinch that up as tight as you can in the middle. You want that, that nub or that, that plastic piece where it attaches to be in the back. And then just get your wire snips out here and cut off that tail. Most people fluff their bows out before they add them into their wreaths, friends. I'm, I'm kind of backwards when it comes to that. I don't usually fluff them until I've added them in, but you can certainly do what you'd like to do. I'm just going to make sure that all my tails are going the right direction here. And they are. I really love that navy and white stripe also. So cute. So go ahead and grab your wreath. Bring it back to your workstation. At this point, friends, there's really no top or bottom to your wreath. And so <clears throat> you'll need to kind of think through where you want to place your embellishments or your sign or your ribbon tails, whatever you're going to do. Um, for my purposes, I'm gonna actually add my bow to the upper area here. And then I've got this cute sign that I actually got from the Dollar Tree as well. But I'm gonna be hanging down here and then I'll be throwing some ribbon tails in just so you can understand the method behind my madness. So we're going to go ahead and add our bow into any one of these top. Remember, we've still got our pipe cleaners and our, or our Chanel stems. So any one of these top sets, wherever you'd like your bow to be placed, you're going to add them in with, with one of your pipe cleaner sets here. Now, you don't want to press it too far down because you don't want your bow to, to disappear and sink. Give it two or three tight, tight twists. And then just get your snips and trim off the excess bit of your pipe cleaner there because now you're finished with that. And then take that little nub of pipe cleaner and just curl it down and out of the way. And remember what I said earlier, friends, I'm one of those folks that does not fluff the bow until I've got other things added in, which I know is not how most people do it. So. Feel free to fluff your bow if you'd like. I'm going to hold off for just a bit. I am going to keep my tails going the right way just so I can keep them in mind. So I'm going to go ahead and leave my loops alone for just a minute, friends, but I am going to take my tails and I'm going to make a cascading ribbon flow here since I've got a couple that are pretty long. So I'm going to keep those two together. I'm going to come over, I'm going to skip one set of pipe cleaners and come to the next. And I'm going to press those down in. And we're going to make like a little ribbon bump. You'll see what I mean here in just a second. 
So I'm going to twist those guys up. To hold our rivet in place. And I'm not sure if the camera can catch that for you, friends, but what that's really made is like this little cascading bump of ribbon. And then I'll just open up my ends here. We'll leave those be for now. It's super cute. And then I think we'll leave the rest unattached and we'll just trim those tails in a short bit. So when I add this sign in, friends, I'm not super fond of the top part of the sign. I just really like that truck. So if you're going to trim this apart, such as I, you're going to want some wire cutters. Um, most things from the Dollar Tree cut pretty easily, quite honestly. So I'm literally just snipping that chain and taking that sign right off. So now we've got just the truck here. I think that's super cute. And I think we're going to add this down below. So now we can just set this truck off to the side and we will attach that as part of our last steps here. But first we need to add some ribbon tails in. So remember we've got 18 pipe planter stems here and we used two of them because we, we attached the bow in one area and then we've got the cascade attached in another. So that leaves us um, with 16 available ties. So set your wreath off to the side and we need to get some ribbons cut for our ribbon tails. I'm going to add the one and a half inch ribbons to the top row of Chanel stems and the two and a half inch ribbon to the bottom part. And because this is so colorful, we're just going to add one ribbon tail per Chanel stem. So we're going to add one piece of two and a half inch ribbon to every set of pipe cleaners on the lower level. Um, we'll use the wider on the lower level just to give it some more depth and dimension. There are 10 sets of pipe cleaners and we've got the two ribbon types, so we need five of each. And so I'm gonna cut them at 10 inches and all I'm going to do is measure out my ribbon to the 10 inch mark and then I'm going to fold it over onto itself until I've got five pieces. So there's one, two, I'm zigzagging, three, four, and five. So I've zigzagged back and forth, friends, and let me show you why. So now we've immediately got five pieces. They're still attached. But once we trim those ends, friend, then, then they'll come apart. And so they'll be separated and the ends will be trimmed all in the same step. So for this wreath, friends, I think I'm going to just cut them at an angle. So I'm just going to take my scissors on the side and come down about three quarters of an inch and then cut up to the diagonal to that corner. I'll flip it over and do the exact same thing. Because it's accordion, your, your angles won't be going the same direction. They'll flip flop back and forth, but I think that's okay with this wreath. And so now we've got all of our pieces cut and ready to go. So we're gonna do the exact same thing with our navy and white striped ribbon. Let's go ahead and add in that lower level, <clears throat> and then we'll come back to the upper level. Let's make sure that one ribbon's gonna be enough. So to add your ribbon tails in, friends, we're gonna add one ribbon to every set of pipe cleaners on that lower level. You're just gonna find the center, either by eyeballing it or folding it in half, giving it a pinch, and then that crease will help you identify that center. And then you're just gonna pinch and gather right there in the center so it looks like a men's bow tie. Fold that over your thumb or your finger. Find any lower level set of pipe cleaners. Add that center part of your ribbon all the way to the base of that set of pipe cleaners. Give it two or three tight, tight twists. And then 
fluff your ribbon tail out. And by fluff, friends, I just mean get it pointing in the right direction and make sure it's not curled up in any way. Normally at this point, if you've made wreaths with me before, I would tell you to trim off your pipe cleaner, but I wanna make sure that we're happy um, with just having one ribbon tail per set of pipe cleaners. So let's add a couple more in to make sure that we think that we've made a good decision here. So again, I've just found the center. I just eyeballed it, pinched and pleated in the middle, folded it over my thumb to make that gentle V. I'm going to the next set of pipe cleaners, adding it all the way down to the center and giving it two or three tight, tight twists to really hold that tail in there. And then I'm gonna fluff out my tail just making sure it's pointing in the direction I want it to point. I already feel like I'm gonna be happy with just one tail, but we're gonna add one more just to be sure. Once we cut those pipe pipe cleaners off, it's, it's we're committed. So let's just be sure, guys. Yeah, I think I'm totally happy with that, friends. I'm just gonna add one tail per. So I'm gonna grab my snips here, go back to where I started and just trim off that excess pipe cleaner. And then if you have like a little nub or whatever, just point that back in, curl that down under. So moving forward on this lower level, every time you add in your tail, and get it twisted in, then just go ahead and trim off your trim off your pipe cleaner and curl that nub under. All right, friends, let's add one ribbon tail to each set of pipe cleaners all along this lower level, and then I'll meet you back here. Now we've added one tail into every single pipe cleaner on the lower level using that two and a half inch ribbon. Each tail was cut at 10 inches in length and then angle trimmed on each end. We're going to do the exact same thing for our upper level of Chanel stems friends, only we're going to use our one and a half inch ribbon. We've already used one of our upper Chanel stems for our bow. So again, we only need five pieces in total. So We'll just randomly choose there we go and we've got three pieces of our red and white striped and now we'll use our multicolored here and we only need two pieces so I've just got to fold it over on itself once and then I can trim off the rest of my ribbon here and just like before friends we'll just Angle cut our ends, which also separates our ribbon. And then we'll get those added in to the upper level of our wreath. <clears throat> so just like the lower level friends, I'm just gonna alternate back and forth. So go ahead and add one ribbon tail into every set of pipe cleaners on your upper level and then I'll meet you back here. You guys, how cute is this coming out? We've added in all of our ribbon tails now and we've trimmed off those excess bits of pipe cleaner. So let's go ahead and fluff out our blow. We're gonna make this the rough fluff or the first go around. And to fluff your bow, friends, you're just gonna take your loops, put your hands right in the middle of those loops and fluff them out to make them three-dimensional. And remember, we used wire ribbon, so they're gonna go where you tell them to go. Give yourself some grace with this, friends. It takes a little bit of time to fluff out your, your bow, and oftentimes, or at least in my case, more than one attempt, because I'm, I'm a fusser. How cute. All right, now I'm going to trim my tails. I'll just caution you, friends, as you trim your tails, trim them gently. You can always take more off, but you can't put it back on. And I'm just angle cutting, but you could certainly dovetail if you wish. 
And I like to cut at different lengths just because I feel like that gives the wreath extra depth and dimension. And you can trim those tails any way you like. And again, because they're wired, they'll curl for you. So I like to take my fingers and just kind of run them over the ribbon. Give them some height, like a little bump here. How cute is that? My goodness. So, so cute. Very festive. And I love this cascading flow that we made here. So last but not least, friends, we've got our little patriotic truck. So let's see where we would like to add that in at. I think I'm going to place it right here and I'm literally just going to cover that in glue and press that down I think I think it's going to stay just fine so hopefully your glue gun is still nice and hot so you're just going to squeeze some glue all over this attachment if you're using a sign you wouldn't want to glue it unless it was just real thin like from the Dollar Tree you would want to attach it with Chanel stems or floral wire or something of the sort. Now because this is metal, that heat's gonna go right through. So FYI, in case you're doing the same thing. And then just flip that over, being careful, and you get one push. So make sure you've got that where you want it. I'm gonna use my scissors to press that down because that guy is hot. Just give it a good 30 second press. So you get that good adherence. And then you'll just need about an hour or so to fully, fully dry and cure. And then it will be ready to hang outdoors. That is it, friends. Just look how stunning this wreath came out. I'm so happy with it. I hope you've enjoyed making this wreath with me today. Again, the supplies and tools list is for you below in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps my little channel to grow. And if you like all things wreath making, please be sure to hit that subscribe button. New videos and tutorials upload every week. Thanks friends. Happy crafting.